Welcome back to Digital Dimension. I hope you had a chance to practice what we covered in the last video. In part 2, we explored the differences between for loops and while loops, understanding how to use each one depending on the situation. For loops are perfect when you know exactly how many times an action needs to be repeated. On the other hand, while loops are more flexible, continuing as long as a condition remains true. We wrapped up by comparing the two, so you can choose the right loop for your needs. Today, in part 3, we're going to bring everything together by putting these loops into practice. There's a lot to cover and it's going to be a fun and rewarding journey. So let's dive in. Let's put our knowledge into practice with a fun simple project. How about a guessing game? We'll use a while loop to keep the game running until the player guesses the correct number and a for loop to give them a set number of tries. This example show you how versatile loops are and how they can interact within your programs. First, we need a secret number the player will try to guess. Let's set that to 5 for now. Next, we want the game to keep running until the player guesses the correct number, so we'll use a while loop. We'll start by setting a flag, game running. That controls the game flow. Inside the while loop, we'll begin a new round of the game. The player will get 3 attempts to guess the number. We'll print a message at the start of each new game to keep things interactive. For the guessing part, we'll use a for loop to give the player exactly 3 chances to guess the number. We can create a loop that runs 3 times, and inside this loop we'll prompt the player to enter their guess. Once the player enters their guess, we'll check if it matches the secret number using an if statement. If they guess correctly, we'll congratulate them, stop the game by changing the game state, and break out of the loop, since they don't need more attempts. But if the guess is wrong, we'll tell them to try again, and the loop will continue. And the for loop finishes, either because they guessed wrong 3 times, or broke out early by guessing correctly. We'll check if the game is still running. If it is, it means they've used all their attempts without guessing correctly, so we'll start a new round. Did you notice how we used break in the for loop to stop further guesses once the player guessed correctly? This is a handy way to exit a loop early, and we'll dive deeper into how break, continue and pass work in the next section. Just like how we used if statements in our previous video to guide the flow of the program, now we're combining loops with conditionals to create a more interactive and engaging experience. Before we jump into common mistakes, let's quickly go over three key statements that control how your loops behave, break, continue and pass. We've already seen one of these in action, remember in the guessing game when the player guessed the correct number and we used break to stop the loop? Break is a powerful tool that lets us control exactly when we want a loop to end. As soon as the correct guess was made, break stepped in and ended the loop, no need to continue checking. That's the magic of break, it lets you stop the loop right when you need to. But two other statements can also help control loops, continue and pass. Let's start with continue. What if you want to skip over certain iterations but keep the loop running? Continue does exactly that, it skips the current iteration and moves to the next one, Check out this example. In this case, the loop ignores number 5, but continues printing the rest. It's like saying, I'm not interested in this one, let's skip ahead. Finally, there's pass. Sometimes, you might not be ready to implement a part of your code just yet, but you need to structure to be there. Pass is a placeholder, it doesn't do anything, but it keeps the loop valid. Here's how you'd use it, try removing pass and see what happens. Pass is great for those moments when you're still planning what the loop should do but want to keep everything running smoothly. So to wrap this up, break lets you stop a loop, continue skips to the next iteration and pass acts as a placeholder where you're not quite ready to add your logic. Now let's talk about some common mistakes you might encounter when using loops. Loops are incredibly useful, but they also come with their own set of challenges. A common mistake and one of the trickiest to spot, which we covered already, is creating an infinite loop by forgetting to update the condition, especially in while loops, where the logic isn't always as clear. Just like we discussed in the last video, keeping your conditions correct is essential, but there's more to watch out for. For instance, off by one errors are frequent in for loops when misinterpreting how ranges work. Remember, range 5 includes numbers from 0 to 4, but not 5. A small misunderstanding here can lead to subtle bugs, 
so always double check your boundaries. Another mistake is modifying the loop variable inside a for loop. This can lead to unexpected behavior, so it's generally best avoided. If you need to adjust variables inside the loop, a while loop might be more appropriate. In a for loop, modifying the loop variables doesn't affect the loop's progression. The loop will continue with the next value from the range sequence, regardless of any changes made to the loop variable inside the loop body. This means that the loop will not skip iterations based on modifications to the loop variable. It will still proceed through the sequences defined by range 5. The consequence of that is, while the values printed might change due to the modification, the number of iterations and the flow of the loop remain unaffected. In the given example, modifying i inside the loop doesn't alter the flow of the for loop itself or the number of iterations. The loop continues with the next value in the range sequence, leading to changes only in the values being printed. Even though it might seem that the loop should skip iterations, in reality, the value of i is resetted in each iteration by the for loop, and the modifications made inside the loop do not persist beyond each iteration. In the while loop, the loop variable is controlled within the loop body and directly impacts the loop condition. This approach works as expected and allows you to modify the loop variable effectively. Speaking of which, choosing the right type of loop is key. Use for loops when you know the number of iterations ahead of time and while loops when the number of iterations isn't clear or you want to control the loop based on a condition. Another subtle issue is overusing break statements. Placing too many or positioning them incorrectly can make your code harder to follow. Try to minimize the use of break or structure your loops so they're not needed at all. You might already know about using else with if statements, but did you know you can use else with both for and while loops as well? The else block in loops runs only if the loop completes normally without encountering a break statement. Here's an example using else in a for loop. In this case, the else block runs after the for loop finishes iterating over all the numbers from 0 to 4. If we had used the break statement to stop the loop early, the else block wouldn't have executed. You can also use else with while loops. Let's look at an example where the else block is triggered after the loop completes without a break. Here, the else block is executed after the while loop finishes normally, because the loop condition counter lesser than 5 becomes false without using a break. The loop runs until the condition is no longer true, and once it completes, the else block prints loop completed without a break. This feature can help make your code cleaner and more readable by handling what happens when loop finishes naturally. Finally, here are a few debugging tips to keep things smooth. Use print statements strategically to track variable values and simplify complex conditions by breaking them down. This makes your loops easier to read and maintain. By keeping an eye on these common pitfalls, you'll make your loops more efficient and less error prone. All right, it's time to put what you've learned into practice with a quick quiz. I'm going to show you a few code snippets and I want you to either predict the output or spot any potential errors. Question 1. Let's start simple. Take a look at this for loop. What will the output be? Is it A, B, C or D? Question 2. Consider the following loop. What is the impact of modifying I inside the loop? Analyze the behavior and select the most accurate statement from the options below. Question 3. On to while loops. How many times do you think this loop will execute? Will it run one time, two times, three times, infinite times? Think about how the condition changes with each iteration. Question 4. Let's return to for loops. What will the output be for this loop, where we introduce a break statement? And finally, question 5. Here's a question about the continue statement. What happens in this loop? Choose the answers you think are correct and let's see how well you understand loops. Share your responses in the comments below and let's discuss. This is a great way to test your knowledge and get feedback from others in real time. I'll reveal the correct answers in the next video, so stay tuned. And that's a wrap on loops in Python. 
Throughout this three-part series, we have explored how for loops can automate repetitive tasks when the number of iterations is known, and how while loops offer flexibility, continuing as long as a condition is met. We dove into essential concepts like break, continue and pass, which give you precise control over the flow of your loops. We also built a guessing game to demonstrate how all these elements come together in a real-world scenario. Along the way, we discussed common mistakes, shared tips for writing efficient loops, and wrapped it all up with a quiz to test your understanding. You've come a long way, and now you have the tools to make your Python code more powerful and dynamic. Now it's your turn, try experimenting with your own loops, build small projects, play around with different conditions, and most importantly, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Every error is a step closer to mastery. The more you practice, the more confident you'll become. Share your projects or any questions in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us for more Python adventures. Keep coding, and I'll see you in the next dimension.